Okay, so we have our third lecture on memory today. Uh, it is going to be a simple one because we are going to be talking about strategies for page replacement, right? So the problem here is you have limited number of frames in the physical memory and your, your virtual memory allows the programmer, essentially the CPU, to generate uh, a lot more virtual addresses than the number of frames that you have in your physical memory. So what is going to happen is you're going to continuously need to replace frames in physical memory uh, if you don't have uh, a place for you to bring in something from the hard disk into the physical memory. Right, so suppose a page fault happens and you need to bring in something from the hard disk to the physical memory, you may find an empty frame, you may not find an empty frame. You find an empty frame, all good, nothing to replace. But if there's nothing available, then you need a strategy to replace an existing frame. That's what we are going to be talking about today. So because we are going to be describing algorithms, it's going to be pretty straightforward. A uh, quick reminder about exam two. Exam two coming up Thursday of next week. So it's one week from today. Uh, it's going to be about, uh, so this lecture is going to be included. Whatever we talk about on Monday is not going to be included. So next week. Um, so all the way from um, control unit, pipelining, memory, these are the topics that we are talking about. Next. So two questions here. The first question is, when should we bring in a new page? When you have a page fault and there's no space in the physical memory. That's when you would need to make a new page. So page is not present in the physical memory, which is indicated by a valid bit being zero, right? So you got a page fault. Uh, so I need to bring in something from the hard disk to the uh, physical memory. Next question, related question is, which page should we throw out? So frames in the physical memory, if you do not have an empty space for it, the thing that you're trying to bring from hard disk to physical memory, if your uh, uh, physical memory is full, there's no slot available, then you're gonna need to pick one frame to throw out so that you can replace that page. So we need a systematic way to uh, systematic page replacement algorithm that is maintained by the operating system. Uh, operating system that results in least number of page faults, right? So what would be a good place to put this guy? Let's try this for a while. So the idea is to have the least number of page faults, reduce page fault rate. Come on. All right. So let's take a look at the need for page replacement algorithms with a simple example here. Suppose we have in the physical memory, just three frames. By the way, the page size is consistent across all levels in your memory, right? So if you have a page size of four kilobyte for a virtual page, it's gonna be the same thing. The page size is gonna be consistent with the frame size in the, in the physical memory. And it's gonna be the same thing for the hard disk as well. So the size is gonna be remaining the same. So suppose we have physical memory with just three frames. Those are indexed zero, one, and two. And suppose we have a program that is running, which becomes a process, and it is referencing pages. In the virtual memory, it is going to generate these page requests, right? So it's requesting seven, then zero, then page one, then page two, and so on. That is called a page reference string. Page reference string is given to us it's just an arbitrary sort of uh, string that we made up. Um, and it looks like this particular program has eight pages, right? Because the numbers that I see range from zero to seven. So very likely that the current program that is running for which this is the page reference string has eight pages. So eight pages, that's our virtual address space, but only three frames in the physical memory. That's what we are assuming right here. So what would happen? Well. Let's try to take a look at the page reference string that is shown above. Those are page numbers, right? So we are, the program is requesting page seven first, then zero, then one, then two, and so on. Well, seven is not in the physical memory. 
right? It's not, nothing is in the physical memory to start off with. That's the assumption that we are making. So it would result in a page fault. You are requesting seven. It is not in the physical memory. So you're going to have to go, what is going to happen? You're going to look at the valid bit. Valid bit is going to be zero. The OS is going to initiate a trap addressing error. In return, it'll uh, initiate disk IO. You bring in the frame from the disk into the physical memory. Which one? Page number seven. Where are you going to bring? Well, find an empty slot. Frames allocated are three. So find an empty slot. We have three empty slots. So you can bring it over there, right? So you requested seven, resulted in a page fault, but you were able to bring that seven in. Now, when you have uh, just off of a tangent here, this is not relevant to this example, but when you had a page fault, what happened? You accessed the uh, page table, right? Maybe the TLB, maybe the maybe you didn't find it in the TLB, so you had to go to page table, which is in the main memory. You found that valid bit was zero. What did you do in response? You started accessing the slow hard disk because you had to bring something into the physical memory. Hard disk access times are much longer, very, very long in comparison to your physical memory and you know definitely your cache. So all those cycles. You have two options, right? M mainly two options. One is do nothing during that time where you are bringing in a page from hard disk to physical memory. Or a better option, I hope you guys agree, is while that is happening, start working on some other instruction, right? So increase the degree of multi programming when you have these page faults. That is the content of next lecture. What do you do? when you're spending time doing page, responding to page faults. Okay, so coming back to this example, you, you wanted page seven, wasn't there, you brought it in, you had an empty slot, empty frame, so you were, you were able to uh, put that in there. That page seven is going to remain in our physical memory. Next, we are trying to, the CPU is requesting for page zero. It is not present in the physical memory. We are going to need to bring it in. We have a page fault and we respond to it by bringing that zero into a physical empty empty frame. Seven zero continues, you need a one, not there, page fault, bring it in, empty slot present, going to work out, right? So we have, we have three page accesses so far, all three of them resulted in a page fault, so it's like 100% page fault ratio right now. Uh, however, the, the bigger problem with that is now all frames are full. So what is going to happen when we try to access page two next? So 701 is still there in our physical memory, and we are trying to access a new page, page two now. So the question here is which one you will you throw out? Will you throw out seven, zero, or one? So let me ask you guys, which one would you throw out? And this is just for a discussion. Go ahead. Which one? The oldest entry, so seven, right? Seven is the oldest entry, so uh, the Richard's uh, algorithm is first in, first out. Whoever comes in first gets out first, right? So seven came in first, it gets out first. But that strategy actually results in the most number of page faults. So, and we'll prove this with this example. So that's one strategy, so that's a strategy. It is simple to implement, that's its advantage. Go ahead. What is it? It is very likely that you, because of uh, temporal and spatial locality, you may have, you know, you, you tend to access the same things over and over again, especially nearby, right? Uh, okay, so continue. What you said? Oh, oh, okay. So one came in, so you would throw out one right away. Uh, my guess is that is going to be a, not such a good choice because the chances of accessing one are more than accessing zero are more than accessing seven. So it's going down the, the other way. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, zero could be, right? So it could be seven, it could be zero, could be one. Now, if you had, go ahead. Uh, longest since you have used. So it is, this is another st uh, strategy which is based on history and that specific algorithm that you're talking about is called least recently used algorithm. 
which is actually a very, very powerful algorithm. We are going to study it today. Uh, but that is also looking at the history, right? What was least recently used? Go ahead. So future, right? So you are essentially predicting which one are you going to need in the future. Based on the future needs, you can throw. So if suppose you, uh, you are throwing away seven, right? So let's say we throw out seven, and immediately in the next request, you have seven. Oh, that was a bad choice to throw out, right? So you don't want to throw out a frame that is, you are going to need again immediately. But that would require what? Predicting something. Uh, what type of paging technique we know the future, or we know some estimation about uh, our request. There was two paging techniques, right? Demand paging and pre-paging. Demand paging was, you ask for it, then I'll respond to it, so, so based on demand. The other one was pre-paging, which was applicable for start of the programs, or if they get suspended when they restart back, that was applicable, because then the pages that are going to be requested, they will be, uh, you will have a, a very good assumption. Uh, of which pages you're going to deal with. So for those kind of scenarios, you have some estimation of your future request, and based on that, you can say, all right, I'm going to not need this particular page for the longest duration of time in the future, so let me throw that out now, right? So based on future needs. But I hope you guys agree that there are going to be several strategies to think about. Some of the strategies that we are going to look at is FIFO, first in, first out. We're going to look at least recently used, and we're also going to look at a, a benchmark, uh, you know, it's essentially like a, um, a theoretical approximation in optimal algorithm, which is not practical because we don't know what the future requests are going to be for sure. So the question is, need to kick out one of these pages to make, make room for page two, which one to choose? That was the question, and you guys uh, answered that with the first one that Richard pointed out was FIFO, first in, first out, uh, page replacement algorithm. Easy to implement because all you need to maintain is a queue. So whichever page in comes in, whichever page comes in, it goes to the head of the queue. So seven came in first, it moved to the head of the queue. Then zero came in, then one came in, now you need two, so whatever page is at the head of the queue will go out to make room for page two to come in. Right? So you're maintaining a queue with head of the queue pointing to the page that was referenced uh, that, that came into the queue um, you know, long time ago. So the operating system is going to maintain this simple queue. Go ahead. All of this in physical memory. Uh, so th this is a queue, right? So it's, it's going to be um, sort of the registers. You don't need, uh, you don't need, you know, a lot, large amounts of data for this. So all of these things are going to be uh, maintained by the operating system, right? So where does operating system manage stuff? It is going to be doing it in the uh, physical memory. Some pages in the physical memory are sort of uh, reserved for the operating system. That's where all of this is going to be happening. But we also go are going to need, uh, to support that, we are also going to need some additional fields inside the page itself. So to, to talk about, uh, you know, where are you in the queue? Right? That information should be there. So some information is within the page itself, but uh, the queue, the queue is maintained by the operating system. So it is in the uh, physical memory in a reserved space for operating system. Uh, let's see. So operating system is going to maintain this simple queue on a page fault if a replacement is needed, right? So if, if you have an empty uh, frame, then you don't need to replace. If a page replacement is needed, then the victim page is going to be the head of the queue. In this case, seven, because that was the oldest page. That is one strategy. Let's take a look at what if we do that for that long page reference string, which, who is going to go out now? Well, seven is going to get kicked out now, right? So two comes in, seven goes out. Yeah, 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 two comes in, seven goes out. Uh, next. The next page uh, request is for zero. 
is it there? Yes, it is there in our physical memory. There is page zero in there. So that is, this is the first time we don't have a page fault, right? So far we have had four page faults. Now this is not going to change anything because zero was already there, page zero was already there in our physical memory. So no page fault in this case. We'll continue. Next, three is requested. So who should I throw out first? Uh, who, who should I throw out now when three is requested? Zero will be thrown out now, right? So zero came in. It's not about reference, right? We are not changing that order in the queue. First in, first out, that's it. So seven came in, it got thrown out. Next, zero came in. So if you need to pick up a victim page, zero goes out, right? So three comes in, zero goes out. Unfortunate, we now need a zero, right? So you see, if we knew the future, if we had some sort of a prediction for the future, we probably would have saved zero, right? Because we wouldn't have chosen zero to kick out. Uh, three would not have been a good choice as well. So maybe our best choice at that time would have been a one. But that didn't happen because our algorithm is based on a simple queue and zero was the, at the head of the queue. So it had to be thrown out and then we need it again. So who are we going to throw out now? Uh, it looks like one, right? Seven, zero, one. So one is at the uh, head of the queue now. So one goes in, zero comes out. Uh, sorry, one goes out, zero comes in, pushes back in. Uh, we need four now. So it looks like two is going to be a victim page. So two goes out, four comes in. Next, we need two. So three is going to be our victim page. Yeah, you guys are seeing this. It's pretty simple, right? Now, whoever is at the head of the queue is getting evicted. Uh, two goes in, three goes out. We need three. So I think four is going to be four or zero? Oh, zero. Zero is going to be kicked, kicked out, and then three comes back. So all of these are resulting in page faults. You see how many page faults we have? All of them except for one. Except for this particular zero in here, almost in the middle of your uh, slide, apart from that, everything resulted in a page fault. So these are, I believe, half of them, uh, let's see, five and five. So 10 of them out of a page reference sequence of a 20 requests. So this is half of them, nine out of the 10, 90% page fault ratio here. So pretty bad, right? So far, page faults are, are nine. <clears throat> Only one we skipped over because it was there. All right. So um, before we go any for uh, before we go further and complete this problem for twenty page references, let me ask you guys: What are you wishing was bigger here? The physical memory, right? If you increase the number of frames, the expectation that you have is I'm going to have fewer page faults. Is it always going to be the case with FIFO? If you, so here, the question is, you have increased the number of frames. As you are increasing the number of frames, right now it's three, three to four to five to six and so on, for the same uh, reference string, for the same reference string, are you guaranteed that you will have a reduction in page faults? It's not. It's, that's a very interesting problem. It's not. So it's, you would expect that, right? I, I agree. Like, it's very tempting to say, yes, it is going to go down because you have more slots now. But it turns out that there are specific strings that actually increase page fault rate even though you are increasing the number of frames. Yeah. In general, in general, right? I'm not talking about like eight page. It's, I'm talking about um, all of them. Uh, so here, I'm not talking about the extreme, right? I'm not talking about all the way to eight. And I'm not talking about three. I'm talking about, how about in the middle, five, six, seven? Like how, what, what is going to be the performance there? The expectation is it'll, it should go down. As you're increasing the number of frames, the number of page faults should go down. But it turns out, so this is called the, 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 um, 
the thing that I'm describing, this problem or this confusion, is Belady's anomaly. So Belady in 1969 studied this, and he came up with Belady strings. He looked at strings that had this issue. Not all of them do, but certain strings uh, have this phenomena where you increase the number of frames, you actually increase the page fault. Uh, and it is a complaint against FIFO. Other replacement algorithms that we are going to see are not going to have that problem. Only FIFO does. All right, let's uh, look at the second half of this example. Uh, again, we are looking at this, um, the same, you know, uh, is, the, is the same page uh, reference string that we looked at. We are just choosing the oldest page through, throughout as things come in. Uh, so I'm just going to run through this. I'm pretty sure you guys are, are following this. So far. A any questions how we are choosing the thing to throw out? Pretty easy to follow along, right? Yeah. Um, let's see, no change here. OK, 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 let's just complete this. All right, so if you do this the, uh, all the way down, you have 15 page faults in a page reference string of 20 pages. So that is 75% page fault rate. So 15 out of 20. So it's pretty bad, right? Um, so let's uh, try to improve it by looking at some alternative. Um, can we do better, right? Like, can we look at maybe least recently uh, used up uh, algorithm? Least recently used algorithm has a problem. It's uh, not so simple to implement. So what you do is you do an approximation to least recently used. And we do a lot better than 15 page faults. I hope you agree that we are trying to reduce the page faults. So what, where did we go wrong, right? Like that was the problem right in the middle here. Let me bring in a pointer here. So right here was the problem, right? So we wanted to bring, so we had to bring a three in, we chose zero to throw out, and then immediately we needed a zero. So we threw out the page that we were going to reference right in the next request. So that was probably not a, the best choice. So we should have kept page two, two. It happened again la later as well. So because so looking at the future, right? So that's a complaint against uh, FIFO. More complaints about FIFO, like I just said, validity is anomaly. So here we have a, let me just pull this down here. This particular reference string, one, two, three, four, one, two, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's a Belady string. So for this particular page reference string, we have number of frames being observed on the x-axis, and we are going from one all the way to six frames, and the page fault are being counted on the y-axis. So of course, if you have only one page, uh, sorry, one frame, then you have 12 page references here. So all of them are going to result in a page fault. That's pretty easy to see, right? Uh, so that's why you have that one over there. And even if you go to two, two frames, you are still going to have 12. The reason is uh, you don't have repetition, right? So there, there's no, never like one, one, the same one moving twice. And because of that, you still have 12 page faults for even two frames, because you are continuously bringing one in all the time. Now, when you go to three frames, then you have some good improvement. You go down pretty significantly. You go four, you go up. And you can actually do the similar page, the, the FIFO uh, algorithm we ran through for the 20 page reference string earlier. You can run that for different, uh, you can do it for three, and then you can do it for four, and you will find that it will increase. It will go down to nine, and then it will come back to 10 when you go to four frames. So Belady looked at this, and he actually said, um, you know, it is the, the worst you can do is twice the number of frames. So you can go, uh, you know, no, not twice the number of frames, twice the number of uh, page faults. So instead of getting, say, na uh, nine over here, as you increase the number of frames, this can actually jump to double that amount, 18. So he claimed that later on it was proved that there is no such bound. It actually can go arbitrarily high. Uh, there, there's no such bound of twice the number uh, of page faults. 1969, so pretty old. Right? 
that it is an anomaly. Page faults go up when we even when we have more frames. Questions about this? So this is uh, you know um, complaints against FIFO. We need to look at some other uh, replacement algorithm. The only advantage here is it is maintained by a simple queue in the operating system. So implementation wise, it is easy to carry out. Your activity today is something like this, right? You're trying to find out for a given page string, you're filling out a table, you're counting page faults, uh, nothing, nothing serious to work out today. Um, and you will have a similar problem on homework and not on homework, sorry, on exam. One of the, you know, nothing too serious to sort of work through. Uh, so what you can do is, while you're working through these problems, you can just try to order the, the frames in the physical memory in, uh, as the queue, right? So whatever is at the top of that list will get out. So you don't even have to remember it as you're working through it. You just maintain it in that order and you'll be fine. Uh, no questions? All right, let's move to the optimal algorithm. I know the future. So this is going to need perfect knowledge of the future. What are you going to require next? So clearly not a practical use. So we can use this for benchmarking, right? We can use this as this is the best I can do uh, for a particular page uh, reference string and the number of frames. This is the best I can do. Let's try to find that out with optimal algorithm. The goal is to minimize the page faults while you are replacing the page that will not be used for the longest period of time in the future, right? Ah, oh, why are you, okay. So when we do that, for the same reference string and three frames, this is what we are going to end up with. So at this time, so first, we needed a page fault here, page fault here, page fault here. After the first three page faults, our physical memory became full. 701 are occupying our physical uh, three frames. We need to bring two in. Now we are replacing seven at this time. Why are we replacing seven? And why are we not replacing zero and one? Well, zero was referenced here. I'm gonna need it soon. I'll not throw that out. I'm gonna need one here. But seven, I'm gonna need all the way here. So seven is going to be needed longest period of time later, which is why seven is the page that gets, uh, is gonna become our victim, uh, victim page. That goes in, uh, two comes in. When we need zero here, it's already there, so no page fault in that case. Three needs to come in. Now, when three needs to come in, we have a choice of two, zero, and one. Zero we are going to need, don't throw that out. Uh, two, we are going to need, we are, don't throw that out. One, we are going to need all the way over here. So let's throw that out, right? So we are doing the best we can, right? With the given number of frames, this is the best we could do. And if you run all the way through, you see how many page faults you have. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of 10 in the first half, and you have three out of 10 in the second half. Uh, the performance is going to get better as time goes on because the first few frames are going to spoil it, right? Like first few frames uh, are definitely going to be page faults in any way, uh, in, in any case. So the best we can do here, uh, yeah, we did all of that. The best we can do here is nine page faults, a lot less than 15 that we had for FICO. Right. Yep, yeah, yeah. So every time you don't, because we assume that the physical memory has nothing at the beginning, so we are gonna to have to need, we are going to need to go to the uh, disk to get it initially. That will count as a page fault. Yes, so page fault has gone down from 15 to nine. 15 was the bad case, nine was the best case scenario. You can do better than this for three number of frames and this reference string. Um, so. Maybe there is a, the, the optimal algorithm has a problem, right? It, it is theoretical. You cannot implement it because you are gonna need uh, future knowledge. Maybe you can get close to it when you're doing pre-paging, but you will not be able to uh, completely 
implement it. So let's try to find a middle path. Not as bad as FIFO, not as, maybe not as good as uh, optimal, but at least close to optimal. Uh, a couple of uh, things to say about optimal algorithm. Future cannot be predicted in general. The algorithm cannot be completely implemented. Some aspects of this can be implemented when you're doing pre-paging. Uh, sometimes if a program is being re used repeatedly, its behavior may be known. That, that, that's pre-paging, right? So you, when, especially when the program is starting or restarting after getting suspended, you will know uh, what pages it's going to request. So you have some idea about what the future is going to look like. So you can um, do the, the optimal algorithm for, for that amount of time. It can be approximated and can be useful as a benchmark. So the best you can do is nine page pod uh, as, uh, in, the, in our example. Questions? All good. All right, no questions on the chat as well. All right, so let me move this down. Least recently used algorithm. When you need to replace a page, you will choose a page that was least recently used. Why least recently used? Because you want to leverage locality, right? You don't want to throw away the page that was most recently used because that, the chances of that getting accessed, referenced is going to be high. So, but this is going to leverage locality. So that's what we have here. So all, this is your answer, right? This is, this is how the physical memory looks like for the same page reference string. You have 20 page references. So 701, yeah, sure, no problem. All three are page faults, nothing, nothing we can do about that. When two needs to come in, it is going to throw seven out because that was the least recently used. Zero was sooner than that, one was sooner, sooner than zero, right? So seven is going to get thrown out, which means that we get to keep zero uh, and use zero. And when we need to bring three in, we are going to uh, throw out what? One. You see over here, we are not throwing out zero because it was referenced here, right? It was least recently, so you are updating here. You see that? And we'll, I'll talk about how we are updating. Um, we have reference bits that we can use to, to find out uh, the history, keep track of history of page reference. Uh, so we save the zero there, and then you, you run through it. So let me see, let me uh, take an example of this too. So when you were requesting page two, and you had 403 in your physical memory, you had to pick four, zero, or three. Which one would you pick? Well, four was referenced right here. Don't throw that out. Zero was referenced right here. Don't throw that out. Three was referenced least recently. So throw that out, right? So three goes in, two comes out. Uh, sorry, three goes out, two comes in. And you can keep track of that least recently used uh, as you're doing this by keeping an order of these frames, right? So you can keep an order uh, of it, it's it's up to you. You can have the more recently used at the top or the uh, least recently used at the top, and all the way down you're going uh, up or down, right? So you can order your frames in your physical memory depending on most recently used or least recently used. That'll help you keep track of which one it is that you need to uh, make victim, and then you can bring the next one up as you throw, throw the the previous one out. You see that? Yeah, all right. So this is one is, yeah, we talked about this. Yes, 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 we talked about that. Um, this one is going to result in 12 page parts. So 15 worst case, nine best case, 12 is your least recently used. The good news about least, least recently used is it is based off of history, right? So you don't have to do any sort of prediction. Even for demand paging in general, you can use uh, and implement least recently used algorithm. The only problem here is it is going to have some overhead in terms of implementation. So let's learn about that. And least recently used, almost as good as optimal algorithm, right? Nine versus twelve, so it's not it's not that bad. Uh, no Belides anomaly for least recently used. So you experience Belides anomaly in FIFO, 
no validity is anomaly in least recently used, which means that you increase the number of frames, your page fault rate goes down. It is widely used even for caches. So as you're moving data from cache to physical memory, even there, which one you are going to remove, right? Which particular uh, block of words are you going to replace in the cache? It is uh, uh, least recently used algorithm is widely used even for that. The disadvantages, however, are it is uh, complicated and expensive to implement. So determining the order in which it was least recently used, keeping track of the history, that is going to require some uh, substantial hardware assistance, some software assistance as well, because you are going to need to keep track of a reference bit and a history byte. And we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. So this is least recently used implementation idea number one. So have a counter, right? So this is this idea is based off of counters. So let's try try to have a timestamp field for each page table entry. So when is a page being referenced? You are having a timestamp field for the page to keep track of that. We add a counter register to the CPU, and that counter is incremented every time that a page is referenced, right? So you're keeping track of page references using a counter for each page when you're ref referencing a page and the CPU is going to reference that page, right? Because it's generating that virtual address. So a virtual address has two things, page number, page offset. Page number is going to indicate which page you are trying to re uh, reference. So every time a CPU references a page, a counter register goes up by one, right? So you're keeping that count as in the counter. When the page is referenced, the counter gets copied to the timestamp field for that page. And which uh, the victim page has, whichever victim page, whichever page has the uh, least timestamp, which means that it was re most recently used, the, uh, the, uh, the time that elapsed was smallest, that is going to be our victim page. But it is going to have some overhead. As you can see, you are going to need a counter in hardware, you're going to need an extra field in page table entries, uh, and you're going to need something that takes the counter, puts it onto the, uh, um, the timestamp field. Then read it, based on that, you uh, find out what the victim page is going to be. So a lot of uh, implementation overhead involved in this idea. But it, it will uh, sort of do a really good job, right? So this is not uh, something that we are approximating, right? This is not an approximation to LRU. This is literally uh, implementation of a LRU. We are not doing any sort of approximation here uh, because we are looking at absolute time of use of reference for, the, for each page. Next idea, keep track, keep a stack of page numbers. So for example, we have a reference string. This is a different one from the, the, the one that we saw earlier, this particular reference string, and we are doing this for least recently used, let us say that we are trying to access four, seven, and all the way, right? So at two here, we have some um, physical memory. These are frames in the physical memory that are corresponding to the pages that were, uh, that, that are being referenced. So most recently is going on the top, Right? So even in the physical memory, we are, you are making that, uh, you are implementing this as a stack. Most recently, pay, uh, may, most recently used page is going on the top, and consequently, least recently used is going at the bottom. So if you want to pick the page that gets out, you are going to pick all the way at the, at the bottom. So let's say that stack, stack in the physical memory of the pages at time, st st time A, right, some time A looks like that. What are we going to do at the next page reference? And the next page reference is for page number seven, right? So what are we doing here? Well, seven is here. Seven is in our physical memory. So all we are going to need to do is reorder things in the stack, right? So we are going to move seven because it is now the most recently used, it goes to the top of the stack and all the others will move one level down. So at some time, next time B, 
uh, we are going to have all of this. We are going to move all of them down and then bring seven up. Oh, come on, seven up. So as your reference, even, so even if you don't, this is not a page fault, right? So this is not a page fault. Seven was already there. All we did, did was implemented least recently used by keeping a stack of page numbers. So uh, that stack has most recently used page at the top, least recently used or referenced at the, at the bottom of the stack. Questions here? So two ideas, one keeps track of time, like absolute time of references, and then the other one, next one, the second idea is just to do it uh, as a stack. So, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 it's just pointers, right? So all of those things will be maintained as pointers. Where is your most, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of those are memory references. You, you will manage that. So again, the operating system keeping track of uh, all that data because the operating system is going to uh, sort of carry out that page replacement, right? Other questions? All right. Approximate L LRU. So problems, counters needed, time stamps needed, stack needed, implementation complexities were there. Let's try to see if we can approximate the least recently used algorithm. Uh, we will do that by adding reference bits to our uh, algorithm. Each time you reference it, that bit is set. Don't access it in a specific amount of time make it zero, right? So you're doing this in a timed interval. So say every 100 milliseconds. In the last 100 milliseconds, did you access the page or not? Yes, set the reference bit. No, reset the reference bit. So have a reference bit for each page, set by the hardware to one, whenever each page was referenced in some amount of time elapsed, some timed interval. Usually that is 100 milliseconds. So each entry in the page table has a history byte. So this is separate from the reference bits. Reference bits are actually going to um, make up your history byte. So your history byte field is last eight reference bits. And each um, uh, entry in page table has that history byte field. So at timed intervals, usually 100 milliseconds, controlled uh, by the operating system. For each page table entry, we are going to take our history byte, which is eight bits. We are going to shift everything right by one bit, which is going to open up the slot of the most significant bit in that byte, and then set the high order bit, the most significant bit, equal to the reference bit for that page. So every 100 milliseconds or every timed interval, what you're doing is you're moving the, uh, history byte right, and you get an empty space for the most significant bit of that byte, you will put in the reference bit over there. Maybe it was set to one, maybe it was set to zero. That will be dependent on whether it was accessed in that given timed interval or not. If it was, if it was not accessed in the last timed interval, then that indicates that, yeah, it has not been, been used recently. It re reset the reference bit uh, for the pages to be zero in that case. You see that history byte, which is a, going to be a bunch of reference bits, moving, move right, bring in the new reference bit. Could be a one, could be a zero, depending on whether it was accessed or not in the last timed interval or not. So let's see, at regular intervals, say 100 milliseconds, is you're gonna shift the history byte right by one, and then copy the reference bits to the most significant bit, the higher order bit. By doing this, you're keeping track of at least the last eight time periods. So for example, if you have the history byte at any given time as eight zeros, that indicates that that particular page was not referenced in the last 800 milliseconds, right? So it was zero and then moved, moved right, zero came in, moved right, zero came in and move on uh, and so on. But if, you, if the history byte for a particular page is all ones, that indicates that that page was referenced 
every 100 milliseconds for the last 800 milliseconds, right? Every time. Next, uh, 100100. That has one all the way up to the most significant bit, right? Which means that this was used more recently than the one that has a zero over there, which essentially that means this, this right? If you have a number with fewer number of ones, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. Oh, which one? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so make it zero. So anywhere zero you put in doesn't matter. Well, not in the front. <laughs> not in the front. Anywhere else, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters when you put it in the front. Um, let's see. So if you look at this history byte, oh, well, assuming that there is a zero all the way to the right here. Uh, you have a one in the most significant place. But over here, this history byte actually has more number of ones, but it, it didn't get accessed recently. Go ahead. Uh, well, the, the goal is what you do after that, right? Like, what, what do you do with that history byte? If you look at this, if I just find out the unsigned decimal value of this history byte, it is going to be more than this, right? So by just looking at which value is higher, I know that it is, it is going to be indicating re recently used. So if I look at this, right, this is going to be 2 raised to uh, 7 plus whatnot, which is going to be much higher than this no matter how many ones you have there, go ahead. The one on the left was used twice, but one of them was most recently. So, because the, the, the algorithm is based off of most recently, least recently used, you are going to essentially look at, that one carries a lot more weight than all the other ones, yeah? Um, next, we interpret these as 8-bit unsigned, and you look at the, the value. So this value is going to be 2 raised to 7 plus 2 raised to whatever, 3 maybe. Um, and this one is going to have a lot more powers of 2, but those are lower powers of 2. They are never going to be more than 2 raised to 7. So if you treat those history bytes as unsigned integers, then we are going to, the higher the number, the most recently it was used. So at a page fault, page with the lowest history byte is going to be our victim page. This was most recently used. Don't throw that out, throw that out. Questions here? So this is, again, an approximation to LRU, right? Because it's only keeping track of the last eight. And it is also doing it in timed intervals of 100 milliseconds. So it's an approximate uh, LRU as opposed to doing timestamps, which are absolute times of references for each page. Uh, the next idea to do approximate least recently used algorithm is second chance FIFO. So it's, it is like FIFO, but before you actually make the page victim page, like evic evicted, you give it a second chance, right? So don't throw it right away, just give it a second chance. And the way you implement that is by using a reference bit. Again, the reference bit is being used. Here it is set by hardware to one whenever the page is referenced. But over here, this reference bit, uh, it is not based off of timed intervals. It is based off of references. So earlier, that reference bit was being, it was changing as the accesses or references to that page changed in a given timed interval. There's no change over here. It is based on whenever the page is referenced. So we implement this as a circular queue, you have all these as page, uh, the, these are frames in the physical memory. Page three is over here, page seven is over here, page zero, page one, and page two are over here. And each of these pages have a reference bit field. R is zero here, reference bit is zero, one, zero, one, zero. That reference bit indicate whether they were uh, referenced or not. 
that's how you are implementing the second chance FIFO. And the way you uh, give it a second chance is by moving a clock hand. Check page pointed to by the clock hand. So let us suppose that our clock hand is pointing right now to this particular frame, which is occupied by page three, and its reference bit right now is zero. So if the reference bit is zero, and you need to replace, you use that to replace, evict that page, right? So you throw in page, throw out page three and bring in, bring in whatever you need to bring in. New page is inserted in its place. Advance the clock hand. Where do you advance? You can go clockwise to say seven. Now, when you move to seven, and let us say that you want to, uh, if there is a need for page replacement, when is it? going to be a need for page replacement, two things have to happen, right? One is page fault, second is no space left. So, right, so if both those things happen, you need to do a page replacement. And let us suppose that the clock hand right now is pointing to page, uh, this particular frame with page seven, what are you going to do? You, want, you don't want to throw out seven. You want to give it a second chance. So what do you do? You just move your reference bit down to zero. So from one, it goes to zero, reset, R to uh, a zero here, you give it a second chance, right? Like you, and then you advance the clock hand and then continue that check. Oh, go back. So you see that as you're moving the clock, you're already taking care of first in, first out, but you are not throwing out one of them. Uh, so you go from reference bit one to zero, and the second time you come in, you go to throw it out. So that's a second chance FIFO, which is sort of very close to, uh, uh, or an approximate version of least recently used. Questions here? Maintain it as a circular queue, clock hand, reference bit. Reference bit is not timed, right? This is not changing with every timed interval. This is uh, set or reset based on access. But different ones for different uh, systems, right? So for cache, you uh, do least, uh, least recently used generally. For uh, pages, you do uh, either second chance FIFO or the, the, the one with the history byte. So in my opinion, I, I see second chance FIFO used a lot. Um, that's a practical approach, simple to implement, and it gives you a good uh, page fault ratio. So second chance FIFO is sort of a winner here. All you're doing is just pointing to different one. Uh, so you, the scalability is, is pretty good for second chance FIFO. All right, so with this, you guys should be okay to do the activity, it's going to be a pretty simple one. Uh, we have a pretty straightforward lecture, even on Monday. Um, then we have an exam on Thursday. So exam logistics, ex exactly the same as what we had for uh, the first exam. I'm still hoping that some of you want to come in. Some of you want to come in, yeah, yeah. All right, a few nodded. Um, so I'll have, say, 20, 20 exams ready to go in, in the room. Uh, so whoever wants to come in can come in and take the exam. And whoever wants to be online, and it can be online and be proctored. Um, so cameras, microphones, same deal as exam one. All right. Let me stop the recording here.